everyone. Welcome to week four of Tarot Spirit Class. This is Brooke. Thank you so much for those that have tuned in each week and watched the videos. I hope you enjoyed Tarot Spirit Class and I hope it was beneficial for those that are watching on your tarot journey. And I'm going to talk about this week what's probably really, really important as a professional tarot reader, especially if you're doing this for a living, part-time or full-time, is terms and conditions and ethics as a tarot reader. How important that is. This isn't the magical side of reading the cards. This is more the basic common sense factors when it comes to your comfort zone and boundaries as a tarot reader. I'm going to speak about that as well as wrap up the Tarot Spirit class with how I treat my cards in terms of charging them, cleansing them, consecrating the decks, etc. So let's begin everybody. This week, terms and ethics and conditions as a Tarot reader. Whether you're doing this as a hobby for fun, whether you're doing this professionally, it's very important to set boundaries, just as you would set boundaries with friends or family. It's very much the same thing. I've learned to set terms and conditions early on when I started reading professionally as a tarot reader, especially putting them on my website, because if you don't have some sort of clause or agreement or contract in terms of where other people can read it, you're kind of putting yourself out there without any form of protection, especially legally or having a disclaimer of some kind. Because in this business, you're not masquerading as a professional licensed therapist or a doctor or a physician or an attorney or anything that may be associated with legal advice, health advice. So you have to be really careful when it comes to performing readings such as this. And also many times clients normally come for a reading because they're experiencing hardships or have real great concerns or crisis issues happening in their lives, not just basically love readings, but even with love readings, you have to be very careful that the client understands if they're not receiving the answer that they want, there's no point in repeatedly asking the same question, or repeatedly wanting to order more readings, or repeatedly, you know, trying to figure it all out. Because if a client in particular is very impressionable, is very much uh, hurt or depressed or suffering something of a real medical condition, it's very important as a professional reader to set terms and conditions. Personally, myself, it runs two different ways. If I'm reading publicly for friends or family, it depends on who I read for. Personally, I do not read for my family. I don't know if it's because I really don't know, want to know what's going on with Uncle Bob, you know. So I don't read for my family. I have read for friends. Uh, so, and I have had read for coworkers as well. But setting boundaries in terms of being a reader. Because people who are not perhaps educated or up to par with esoteric or metaphysical studies or divination or in that realm or in that world of palm reading or tarot reading or oracle cards or oracle reading. People have a tendency to be like, oh my God, when they find out that you read the tarot, oh my God, can you read for me? Can you read for me? And you want to be like, sure, no problem. But really, you want to be careful with that because I don't really want to read for my next door neighbor and really want to know too much about what's going on in her life. So I always kind of feel it out, like my spidey sense. I just kind of feel it out. Do I really want to read for this person, especially if it's going to be a free reading or just something for fun for them? Do I really want to go there? Do I really want to uncover something that maybe perhaps 
I might see in the reading and get on that level with them that's kind of crossing the fence from being a friendly neighbor to something real personal. So you got to be really, really careful in terms of setting boundaries and being clear and concise about what you're willing to read for. So for instance, personally in my tarot private sessions, I do not read for third parties. In the beginning, I had an onslaught of people who desperately wanted to know, is he going to leave his wife for me? Or is, 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 you know, is he ever going to get divorced? Or is she ever going to leave her husband? Or are we ever going to be together? And it kind of started to make me feel icky. And it was kind of like bad mojo. And never take on a reading or a request for a reading, especially because you need the money, okay? Yes, it's nice to have tarot sales come in, it's nice to be paid for your services, but are you willing to cross that bridge just because you need, you know, extra sales this month? Is it really worth it for you to kind of jump in the quagmire of this huge drama and huge dramatic mess on other people's lives. So I do not read for marital affairs. I do not read for third parties because it made me personally feel yucky inside and I just did not want to go there. That's your personal preference. Many readers will read for any topic under the sun. That's all lies within your hands what your boundaries are personally and ethically within yourself. I don't go there. So also many times as I discussed in a previous video, I think it was uh, last week's video, oh, and trusting the message, people have misconceptions about tarot readers or readers in general and they think it's fortune telling. So I had many times people requesting me to read them there are a lot of numbers, you know, and will my husband strike it rich kind of thing. And I've actually had to refund sales and say, I'm sorry, you know, if I was that psychic, I wouldn't be doing this right now. I'd be in my, you know, mansion in Beverly Hills somewhere. So, you know, it all depends on what you're comfortable with, what you're comfortable about reading about topics, about requests. For, so it's all up to you, but it's very important to set clear, concise boundaries and have terms and conditions. So I do not do this just for the money. I want to make sure that if I'm reading for someone, there's a genuine need for the reading. Will this help them? Will they progress from here? Will they... Will it enable them to make the right decisions in their life? Will they get a better outlook or a better insight into what needs to help them figure it all out? So that's where I come from in terms of ethics, in terms of terms and conditions. And I have it on my website. And also it protects you as a reader with a disclaimer legally you're not responsible for any actions taken after a reading. And I put that under my YouTube videos as well. Everyone has free will, meaning they are free to make their own choices. They are free to make their own decisions after a spiritual reading, a tarot reading, etc. So that's where I come from. I think it's very important to base that whether you're doing this uh, for a living and receiving payment for your services or whether you're reading at fairs and festivals for free or whether you're reading for family and friends to really be strong and have a backbone when it comes to what you will read for, who you will read for, what topics you will read for. Does it make you feel uncomfortable? If it does, don't do it. That's my advice because trust me, I have done it. It made me feel weird or icky or negative energies and you just do not want to be a part of that. So it's very important to have clear, concise boundaries and you can 
tailor it in your own words. It can be anything that you decide upon to do. So whatever you're comfortable with as a reader, whatever topics you're comfortable about reading about. Like for instance, I'm not a psychic medium. I can't, I'm not like Long Island medium or Monica the medium, you know, where I can contact the other side. Now I've had experiences with loved ones that have passed over personally to read for people connecting to the other side. I have done it. Do I do it all the time in my private practice and announce it publicly that I do it? No. I have done it and it's something that is a gray area because it's something that can be very much healing for the other party but you want to make sure that it's also beneficial to you as well so it just depends on where you are in your tarot spirit path right now of what you're deciding is helpful for the other person and what is helpful for you so if you ever get requests to do readings that perhaps you don't normally do or that are not advertised on your website it's up to you of course, to decide, am I okay with doing this? Do I think that I can do this? Am I confident enough to do this? Will I be able to deliver the message in a clear, concise manner with good intention? So it really depends on what you're comfortable with as a reader. And it's very important to have ethics. It's very important to have terms and conditions. And it's very important to set clear, concise boundaries. Because in the end, at the end of the day, you're going to be dealing with coming down from different people's energies and coming down from different people's emotions and rethinking back to, I hope that person is feeling better. I hope that this person heals on their journey. And you do think about the clients that you have read for and you wonder how they're progressing in their lives. So it's a very strong connection with people. And with that, to protect yourself, not only to protect yourself ethically or legally, but also to protect yourself in terms of feeling good about developing who you are as a reader. There are many people out there that will read for any topic, any situation, but how far are you willing to extend your energies in doing this? Because the bottom line is that's where it all lies at the end of the day. You're going to be the one that's sitting there with the, the emotional energies of that reading and how it makes you feel. So if you have any doubts at all, my advice to those out there that do read professionally that are watching this, don't do it. If it makes you feel uncomfortable, don't do it. If something feels off with the other person, don't do it. Also, if clients come to you and they're very aggressive, that's another issue that I'm going to get to in a minute. Aggressive clients, and I'll be right back. Aggressive clients or clients that are a bit pushy, clients that are a bit impatient, what do you do? When I had my business advertised on Etsy, I tried out Etsy at first, plus I had my own website, but I wanted to give Etsy a try. I didn't have much success on Etsy because many times people would just email me asking me questions and not wanting to pay for a reading. Or if they wanted to pay for their, a reading, they demanded that it would be done that day or it should be done within 24 hours. And they kind of put their demands on me. And if I ever encountered anybody who was super duper aggressive with me about pressuring me to perform a reading, I would refund their sale and wish them on their way and pray that they would find somebody better suitable for their needs. There should not be a feeling of pressure when it comes to clients. 
because clients are seeking you out for a reason. Those that call upon you for your services or those that call upon you to read for them are essentially trying to find like trying to find like the best deal on a used car, trying to find the best physician or trying to find the best hairdresser that suits their needs. It's very much the same thing because as a tarot reader, you're offering a service, you're giving services, services, services rendered, you're offering a service. So people will try out different readers. Your repeat clients are really your bread and butter because they keep coming back to you. They trust you and you've developed that client reading client reader confidentiality thing. That's security. That's what you're looking for. The ones that you never hear from again, well, I'm sure that they've probably found other readers that are more suitable for their needs. But the ones that are aggressive and the ones that are assertive and demanding and, you know, like Veruca Salt from Willy Wonka, I want my reading now. I mean, you know, they're out there. And you sometimes on YouTube, you can see that from the comments from people that leave very critical annoying little comments. I just love those people. So anyway, you know, they're out there and most of the time they're not wanting a genuine experience. They're wanting to hear the answers that they want to hear. And I really admire readers who set ethics and set terms and conditions because it shows me that they're not just in it to, uh, collect the paycheck. They're not in it just to get, you know, build their tarot empire and, and, you know, are in it for the money, so to speak. They're in it because they generally have a gift. They want to share that gift, but it's also a, a, a thing of respect. I think when you see tarot readers set up terms and ethics and conditions for themselves, whether it's reading once again, Free readings for friends and family. You know, I'm sorry, Uncle Bob. I, I don't read for, you know, lotto numbers, and I can't read for you and your marital affair. I mean, that's an example, but you know what I mean. So I really, I really respect the ones that make sure that the client knows and that it's put out there. This is what I read for. This is what I don't read for. If you're super pushy and aggressive with me, sorry, you know, next. So it's very, very important for you to have that for yourself. Now, in terms of the cards themselves, what do I do to charge or cleanse or consecrate my cards? In fact, hold that thought. Let me get some cards out real quick. And we'll discuss. I treat my decks, and I have more than one. I wish I had quite a tarot collection like some of these people that I know, but that's a dream. But anyway, I have maybe five decks. I use primarily three decks, but the one that I've had the longest is the Marseille deck, and I've had this deck about 20 plus years. You can see it's, it's getting worn out and kind of you know, not dirty, but it's worn. It's like an old friend. So my deck in particular, I'll place crystals on my deck. Let me find a crystal. Crystals, or even, this is selenite. They have charging properties, and quartz crystals in particular will take on other stones energy. So you can pair these with other stones that have different healing properties. So if I can find one, here's a stone. I think this is malachite, but you can pair different stones together. I'll place them on top of my decks. I'll lay them out sometimes or I'll put them in the sun. I also, if I'm in a hurry 
or in between readings to knock out the present energies from a previous reading or to knock out negative energies, I'll knock on my deck three times. And it just kind of zaps whatever was in there out. Especially if I'm doing YouTube readings and you're shuffling and you keep to get, you seem to keep getting the same cards. You're like, what? You know, so then I'll dun 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 and then I'll refocus and then it all is completely different. So I do that. I'll use incense sometimes and I'll have incense around the cards themselves, kind of like consecrate the cards. I also smudge my cards with uh, sage, white sage bundles that you can buy at your local magical shop or you can find it online everywhere. So I do that and I also kiss my cards after I'm done a reading. I'll kiss my cards. That's just my way of connecting to my deck. So there's many ways of charging, cleansing, and consecrating your cards. I also do not let anybody touch them unless I'm in a reading. I'll ask the client publicly if it's a public reading, would you like to shuffle the cards yourself? I always give them that preference. I don't let my children touch the cards. I don't let other people touch the cards. I keep them tucked away where they're not out where they wouldn't get lost or, you know, 52 pick up and they're everywhere. So I'm very careful that I know where they are at all times and I'm very protective of them because they really, you know, they're like my best friends at times, especially with what I do as a tarot reader. So there's many ways of charging and cleansing and consecrating your cards and your deck, whatever preference that you prefer. There's many... Uh, ideas out there that you can find online, you know, things to do under the full moon, new moon, different moon cycles, different days of the week, different magical correspondences, if you wanted to dive into that. So there's many ideas that are out there in terms of how you take care of your cards. Some people like to wrap their cards traditionally in silk. I maybe have one silk scarf that I own. Uh, this deck in particular, because it's so old, I have it wrapped up in a piece of green cloth. Uh, it's almost like velvet that was taken from a dress that my aunt wore in the 60s. Uh, she's a musician. She lived in England. So anyway, I've had this piece of cloth for like 23 years that I... Uh, cut out of one of her dresses that she gave me one time. So anyway, so that's what I wrap this deck in. So this, so to me, this deck has much sentimental value, and I think of her, and because I got this deck around the same time, so it just kind of takes me back to that magical period in my life. So there's many, many ways of charging your decks, cleansing your decks, consecrating your decks. It's all up to your preference. So. I wanted to end the Tarot Spirit class this week, especially dealing and talking about the basics, you know, terms and conditions, what you're comfortable with, your ethics as a Tarot reader, and really developing that for yourself. And also to end it with charging and cleansing and consecrating your Tarot deck and treating them with dignity and respect because you really, um, anything of a uh, tool of some kind like that in an oracle of some kind I really think you need to treat it with respect and pay attention because once you use your cards a lot you can always tell uh, especially if the reading was very heavy with emotions you can tell from your cards when they're a little off I'm sure many of those that are watching that read you know what I mean so you can really tell when your cards need a good cleansing or even a timeout I don't use the same decks all the time and sometimes I feel called or pulled to use a certain deck. And for those that are watching that read, you understand what I mean. So it just goes by how you feel at the time. So I hope everybody enjoyed the Tarot Spirit class. Please leave me your comments below if uh, you want me to include anything else. I know this is a four-week course and it's kind of short, but I wanted to... Really put it out there, especially for the ones that read for themselves or are interested, you know, in what I do personally as a private tarot reader. 
I don't think it's very much discussed on YouTube that much. Um, I think it's important to have camaraderie when it comes to the Tarot community and supporting each other. And I think it's just really important. And I wanted to share that. And I hope I didn't come across as being like, I know more than you do. Because I don't. <laughs> At all. You know, I'm just Brookie from the block. I don't, I'm, don't try to pretend to be anybody that I'm not. So... I hope you enjoyed it out there for the ones that have watched the videos. Thank you so much for joining me for Tarot Spirit class. And I hope that you guys have a blessed journey on your Tarot Spiritness, wherever you are out there that are watching. Have a blessed day, and I'll speak to you soon.